Good day, Great Twelves. Welcome again to another lesson with Kumalo M, the Geography Sangoma. I hope you have enjoyed lesson number nine, where we were talking about um, uh, we are continuing from the strategies of uh, industrial development. Uh, we talked about different things such as your gear and uh, what all the things that you have done. If you have not subscribed to my channel, to my YouTube channel, please go to Geography with Kumalo M. Subscribes. Click the notification button and then you are going to get a, a, a notification on each and every lesson. Let's go without wastage of time. Grade 12. Now, today I'm not going to start with what the examination guideline says because it's a continuation from what we have done in the previous lessons. Now, what I want you to know here, Grade 12, I want you to know the difference between special development initiatives, which are known as the SDI, and the the industrial development zones which are known as the ITZ. Now you can see it's a continuation from lesson number uh, nine because it was a very lengthy um, lesson. Now special initiative, development initiative is a development corridor. So it's a corridor. It links uh, uh, these ITZs. A, a, a special development initiative, it will be now what? It will be a a development corridor that is development along a major transport road for example a major highway so our sdi it can be a major highway it can be a corridor that links these sdis it connects the major industrial and mining areas so its function is to connect these itz to one another and then the as the sdi again it is government improves infrastructure along the development of this corridor to stimulate development and access our, uh, areas along this road so now this will join major roads which transport our goods and and services from one area to another so now they will be business development along this corridor and then Another thing you must know about the special development initiative is that small towns and small towns and activities such as farming and tourism are developed along this road. Now think about a road grid 12 where now it connects to different industries. Now there will be more or uh, many cars that are traveling through that road, and those cars will look for 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 accommodation because if you are moving goods from Kauteng to Port Elizabeth, it will take you a long hours to drive a truck from there to uh, to where you are taking them. So hence you are going to look require food, you are going to require water, you are going to require accommodation so that you can rest to avoid accidents. So that is one of the importance of the thing uh, of. of the a special development initiative now let's look at the characteristics of a idz which is a industrial development zone it is usually closer to the harbors remember when you talk about harbors a harbor is found where there is an ocean and there is a ships that export and import uh, uh, goods from one country to another it includes already existing factories so an industrial development zone it is made up of different industries think of an area that has different factories different factories where it is and then government plans to upgrade infrastructure and services to attract further development then the itz are linked to each other by what by other major cities or which is by the sdi so the sdi you can see that it is linking all these cities all these industrial regions the itz so the itz are linked with each other by a corridor or a highway which is a special development initiative and then we we'll also look at now on the map let's look at the location now the one that we are doing this year remember our sdi for this year it is what grade 12 it is the world coast sdi where is the world or coast uh, 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 the world coast sdi it is there along the the coastal region of the eastern cape province so that is the only one we do this year there are the rest of these you do not do them the only ones that we do is the one that i've pointed there with a uh, an error then then let's look at our itz uh, the, our itz's or the itz's which is industrial development zones so you can see now 
There is the one that you are doing this year. This year we look at Koyega ITZ. What are the activities? Remember we did the activities that are taking place there. It's a motor industry. This uh, area has con uh, has contributed with 7,147, but it's just an estimate, but there are more because these resources are from long time ago. And then the value of investment up to date is 2.1 billion in this particular area. So what you have to understand and what you have to know is now is that this is found there. Don't mind this block, why we have placed this block here is because it was not going to fit and it was going to close the material, uh, the, 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 the location of this. So you see, there is a line pointing down there next to the Eastern Cape. That is where we get our the, our Koyega, the IDZ then. So, Gretoff, we are going to look at the concept of centralization and decentralization. Now, in industries, so when we talk about industrial centralization, most of the industries are found are being found in one place. We call it over concentration or and or centralization, industrial centralization. Now we have to remove these uh, industries, take them to the outlying areas. So now, what are the reasons to why decentralization must okay? There is an uneven spread of financial resource and service in South Africa. So there is a all provinces don't get a, 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 a same amount because most of the government resources will go into areas that have economic potential and where there are more many people there. The job opportunities are also not evenly spread throughout the countries. So most of jobs opportunities are in those industrial regions where there is job industries which provide jobs. But the let's look at now the advantage and the disadvantages. Now. There is a multiplier effect as an advantage to centralization. So I can buy, I can sell, I can buy, I can sell, I can buy and sell. Uh, the, the. So it's a multiplier effect. I can buy resources and use the resources uh, to that uh, extent to benefit myself. And then there's a good infrastructure and communication networks. There is good labor market and the, the disadvantages to centralization will look at the rural areas and outlying areas remaining undeveloped. So those areas are not going to get developed because where people are, are more, that is where most of the resources are going. The government will take most of the resources to those areas and those areas that have uh, uh, economic potential. The housing shortages in core industrial regions. So they become a house shortages in the places where there are many people so there'll be high demand of houses then they it will lead to a shortage of houses and then rural town declines so the rural people will decline remember in your settlement geography we told we talked about uh, 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 what we call a uh, 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 rural urban migration so people living from rural areas coming to urban areas so there will be more people in the urban areas than in the rural areas so it means that the rural towns will decline in numbers and then we look at the high level of pollution and environmental degradation so where there are more people more pollution is going to be created and there will be environmental degradation environmental degradation we are talking about a, 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 a manner in which now the the environment is not taken care of it is polluted uh, in, and it is uncontrollable uh, in terms of pollution Decentralization. What is the reason for decentralization? We have talked about this. Decentralization may be required by the government to stimulate the growth in outlying areas. So if you want to grow the areas that are outside of the city, we will look at decentralization. Depletion of resources. They need to reduce transport costs. When we want to reduce transport costs between market and the industries, we, we, we will apply the, the method of decentralization. The product is no longer in demand. So you can't stay in an area where they will not buy. For example, if I'm offering bolt and I know that people don't uh, request bolt in this area, that means I must move and go to a place where there are many people who are interested in using bolt. And then the effects of decentralization, where these industries are moving, people will lose jobs as these companies close down. But where this, this business are going, they are going to create more employment opportunities for to a place where this this uh, uh, is going to and then the outlying rural areas will benefit from the improved infrastructure so there will be an improvement of infrastructure into those areas i hope you have enjoyed the lesson this is me kumalo m your geography Sangoma. subscribe and click the notification button there on my youtube channel thank you very much have a lovely day grade 12s